Creating a protagonist, adding resource collection, and finding a proper cohesive art style. These are some of the topics we'll be discussing in today's devlog, so let's just jump into it. On the last episode of the Monster Tower devlogs, we tried two different ways of creating an interesting art style for our 2D adventure, but you guys really didn't like the final look we decided on. So we scrapped it and we went back to the original design concept of using sprite stacking how we originally intended to. I personally fell in love with this prototype called Neo. This game was made by Moppin, the creator of Downwell, and Nemk, who creates some really awesome pixel art. With this in mind, we started brainstorming some ideas for what our game will look like. First up was creating our protagonist. I teamed up with a developer in the community, Wizzy Wizard, to help me out with the character's visuals. We started with a basic idea in mind and started to narrow down what kind of character we wanted. After some experimentation, we ended up with this little guy. We are drawing a lot of inspiration from indigenous tribal groups like the Cree, who are mostly located in Canada. I myself am from Canada, so I think it would be really interesting to explore more about the different cultures and capture a unique feel in our game that you don't see too often. My brother played through this game called The Moose Man recently, which also very much intrigued my eye, so expect some slight similarities between these two for Monster Towers and design. Anyway, I got to implementing all the animations into the game, and then changing the character's colors to have him fit better with the style we are going for. After finishing the character's design, I decided that I needed resource collection in the game, so I kept it simple and implemented fishing. It's pretty simple at the moment, press the interact button whenever you see this alert icon show up, and you can reel in a fish. I will be expanding this in the future to be more complex, but honestly, if I'm being real, I am already pretty addicted to how it is in the game so far. We will have other skills in the future like woodcutting and mining, but let's take it one step at a time. Fishing was a cool activity I picked up with some friends recently, but in Canada, our winters are like half the goddamn year, so why not just put it in a video game so I can do it whenever I want. I think you guys have waited long enough, so let's get to finishing a mock-up scene of the wilderness area. My brother got some more sprite stacking done while I worked on some other 2D shapes for the scene. I created some tile sets, 2D trees, flowers, and grass, while my brother started working on some sprite stacked trees, rocks, and bushes. We set up a basic scene in the room editor of Game Maker, and within a couple days we got our scene set up in game. Introducing the first mock-up scene for Monster Tower. We still need to work on the overall world design and sprites a bit more, but I'm pretty happy with the end result. For the people interested in this art style as much as we were, I created these visuals by following a few 3D game maker and sprite stacking tutorials, which you can find links to in the description of this video. Now that we have a proper scene set up, let's talk a little bit about the combat. Well, to start, all monsters will be given two types. Each monster has a class and an element. These work pretty similar to how most typings work in other turn-based RPGs like this, but basically all types will have strengths and weaknesses against the other elements and classes. There are six total elements and six total classes. For elements, we've got fire, water, nature, air, mystic, and cyber. And the classes are Warrior, Ranger, Sorcerer, Guardian, Assassin, and Pharaoh. Here are some charts for those of you who are interested in specifics. Grey is neutral, green is effective, and red is weak to the opposing type. Elements and classes don't actually interact with each other, but you may come across certain moves that have both a class and an element associated with it. Looking back to our mock-up battle scene, you can see that all monsters are placed on a 2x3 square grid per team, with 4 monsters on each side. 
We will be talking a lot more about how stats and combat works in the next devlog where we really focus in on getting the battle system working in game. For now, just know that when attacking, you will be attacking specific squares on the grid rather than the monsters themselves. And you will have to play around with moving around your monsters around the grid and preparing for your opponent's future attacks. We want to keep the game simple enough for beginners to pick up the game and have a good time, but at the same time having a high skill ceiling for those looking for a Pokemon-like game with a really high skill cap with limited RNG. I asked you guys to submit some monster fan art on my Discord server to get featured in the next devlog. So without further ado, here are some awesome designs you guys came up with. Thanks again for all of your continued support, make sure to subscribe to catch up with my progression of this game on the 5th of every month. That is going to conclude today's episode, but guys, until the next video, have a great life.